Hi everyone, welcome back to Disco Elysium, um, bonus episode number four. So, I don't know how long this episode is going to be, the only kind of proper extra thing that I want to see is the statue that Idiot Doom Spiral was working on for our kind of ultra-liberal side quest, but apparently, because I had booked it up, uh, that doesn't happen until after the tribunal, so what I'm... I'm going to have to play through like the majority of the rest of the game. I, I do still have quite a bit to do and a bunch of side quests I haven't touched yet. So I'm going to get on with all of that stuff. Uh, and then I might do a couple of things different. Like I'll knock over Ruby's um, noise generator thing and see what happens with that. I'll show you that. I'll maybe cut to that. Um, I'll wear the whole full armor set for the tribunal take my gun with me see how that works out and i'll probably just cut, uh, just show you those two little different choices and then maybe just sh uh after, and then we'll get to see the statue after the tribunal and then maybe i'll show you if kim's summary at the end of the game is any different i've not played the game drastically differently but there's just a few other things like the church like the homosexual underground thought um Maybe he'll he'll say some different stuff about us. So yeah, I've, I don't know how long it's going to be, but we'll see. So um, before that, uh, I just wanted to say um, thanks to everybody who's come along for the ride with Disco Elysium. This will be the final final episode, I hope. I think, uh, but yeah, I've had a really good time, um, and yeah, I've really looked forward to, to chatting with everyone and playing the game and everything. It's been a great experience. I just want to say thanks for that as this is probably the last episode. Okay guys, so I'm about to kick everything into motion for the end game. I'm about to go talk to Ruby and I'll show you what happens if we try and take out her little white noise machine. But before that, because I've got so much money, I bought a bunch of stuff in the bookshop and we can actually play a board game with Kimmy. Um, I'm gonna try. The suzerainty box is heavy and slightly awkward <laughs> in your hands. You give it a light shake and feel the pieces shift around inside. I'm, I would have done this in the main game. I just never had enough money. I was broke as a joke for like the whole playthrough. So I couldn't really afford most of the books. But come on, Kim, let's play. What is detective work if not an elaborate game? Yeah. You need logical inference, attention to detail, the ability to analyze your opponent's motives. Come on, it might help us think of more creative solutions to the case. Hmm. I do feel like my thinking has become somewhat rigid. Yeah. Maybe a little diversion to keep the mind limber is just what's in order. I think this might pass quite a lot of time though. See? He's doing the hard work himself. All he needed was a little nudge. Uh, all right. You've convinced me. How do we play? Uh, I've read the rules. You explain the basic setup procedures to the lieutenant, who seems to be a quick study. You each take your bag of tokens and counters and unfold the board between you. Awesome. In the center is the crown of Revachon. Radiating outward are a colorful vessels, each one supplying some raw material desired by the suzerain. Apricots from Safre, archaeological treasures from Ilmarat, sugars from the Seminine Islands, and magenta cocaine from Supra Mwindi and Sarah Maritza. So I did read the rules, but I can't really remember because that was yesterday. I, I tried to get this done yesterday, um, but there was just too much of the game I had to play through to get to the bits that I wanted to do differently. So uh, I can't really remember the rules. We need to get lots of resources. There's also a neat little log to keep track of your progress in case you need to put the game away and return to it later. Yeah. The lieutenant goes first. He draws a contract card and moves several of his workers to the Safre territory of the board and the others to the Seminine Islands. All right, detective, uh -oh. your turn. You have a few options available to you. Will you try to fulfill contracts right away or rearrange your workers to maximize production on future turns? Remember what the rule book said. You will want to choose a strategy early on and stay committed to it. Um. Let's let our workers rest. What is the very beginning of the game? Your workers haven't even done any work yet. So? There's no concept of rest in suzerainty. Workers have to work. You produce a handful of archaeological treasures and a smattering of other resources. 
Meanwhile, the lieutenant spends two of his sugar and one of his apricot tokens to complete his contract card. He is rewarded with four coins uh -oh. and a round wooden token that he places in the center of the board. That's a market. It's worth two victory points. Glower slightly. The lieutenant returns your baleful look <laughs> with a satisfied grin. Come on, is that your game face? You're practically broadcasting your position to the lieutenant with that expression. Glancing over the board, you see several possible strategies. Pressing more workers into service would increase your economic output and help you to survive a possible conflict with the lieutenant. Or you could ignore your labor supply and focus on fulfilling contracts for points and resources. Those aren't your only mm -hmm. options. You could also show your workers how much you appreciate them by investing some of that wealth in them. After all, they're the ones producing wealth for the suzerain. Mm. Well, sure, you can do that. It's just not a terribly effective strategy. But then, it's up to you. We have to be consistent, right? Let's just go full. Just commit to being nice to everyone, every all our workers. Invest in the workers. To the lieutenant's puzzlement, you spend several turns building various improvements to your territorial infrastructure. Yeah. Soon, your workers have access to clean water, paved roads, and basic hobbies. In return, they produce one extra resource per turn. I am Harry the Benevolent. Gaze on your workers like a benevolent... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that it said that. Benevolent parent. Grimace at them for not working harder. Yeah, benevol benevolent. The, I've said the word that many times. It doesn't mean anything now. Hmm. Too bad investing in your workers just isn't worth many points. What do you mean? Take a look at the scoring tables in the back. Yeah, we'll see. The lieutenant turns to one of those appendices you skipped over earlier. You see in table 8C that investing in territorial infrastructure multiplies your final victory point total by one, which is to say not at all. Whereas, erecting monuments in Revachol gives you a multiplier of five. So you're saying the values of the ruling class are completely divorced from the well-being of the people who generate their wealth? Yes, precisely. Now it's the lieutenant's turn to respond. He moves aggressively onto the Safri territory. Soon, his workers are producing a steady supply of extremely valuable apricots. For several turns, you struggle to respond to the lieutenant's <laughs> burgeoning apricot empire. Eventually, you relocate the majority of your workers to Supramawindi and Saramaritsa, where they begin producing a bumper crop of cocaine tokens. You draw a new contract card. According to the text, there's an aristocrat willing to trade a large supply of cocaine for a number of coins and access to a rare bonus. Amplified music worth seven victory points hmm. you know this isn't unlike the situation the historical revisholian suzerainty faced in safari in the middle of the last century tell me more encyclopedia well the suzerain was looking for new markets for all the cocaine it was producing <laughs> and it settled on safari by introducing cocaine into safari under exclusive contract the suzerain created an extremely valuable captive market for an extremely addictive product. Yeah, that's fucked up. If you could somehow get the lieutenant's workers addicted to your cocaine, <laughs> you could not only make them less productive, you would also force the lieutenant to pay you for your cocaine tokens each turn. Is that even possible in a board game? Yes, you can. It's right there in the rules. You've reached a critical strategic juncture. How do you respond to the lieutenant's aggression? Go for the contract, give back to the workers, introduce the lieutenant's workers to cocaine, attack the lieutenant and steal all his resources. Yeah, let's get them hooked. <laughs> Sorry, Kimmy. Ah. The lieutenant's face goes stony as you take your turn. He doesn't appreciate you getting all his workers addicted to cocaine. With each passing turn, you slowly bleed the lieutenant of coins as his own workers become less productive and more dependent on your magenta cocaine tokens. Yes, give me the money, Kimmy. As a matter of historical fact, this is almost exactly what happened in Safre. To this day, fully half of the former Safre Empire 
remains dependent on international aid in exchange wow. for a steady supply of cheap produce. Let's not say anything because he might think of a plan. Realizing victory is slipping away, the lieutenant launches a desperate gambit. Protectionism. By erecting tariffs on your cocaine, he hopes to starve you out of the market at the risk of incurring the suzerain's disfavor. Disgraceful, Kimmy. The end game is upon you. Do you escalate the trade war with the lieutenant in hopes of crushing him with your economic might? Yes. Or do you ignore his aggression and focus on building the mighty victory column structure in Revachol herself? Alternatively, you could throw the whole game away by trying to build a public education system for the children of your workers. The choice is yours. Victory column, a trade war, education system. Throw the whole game away. <laughs> I'm tempted by that. I'm a bit nihilistic. Self-destructive, after all. Um, I don't like ignoring his aggression because it has an effect on us. Trade war. It's on, Kimmy. The lieutenant nods gravely as you erect tariffs against his apricots and sugar. This is going to get ugly. With every turn, tariffs are raised until neither you nor the lieutenant are producing any income or generating resources for the suzerain. Uh oh. Even in the best of cases, it's impossible to really win a trade war. But this is far from the best case, and the lieutenant's apricot-powered economic engine crushes yours oh but cocaine soon your coffers are empty and the map lies strewn with your worker tokens i hope you learned your lesson the lieutenant says with a sharp smile yeah never play board games never fuck with kim kitsuragi hey now let's tally up the scores shall we god that was so aggressive kim computing the final scores is almost a game unto itself you each spend an inordinate amount of time making stacks of coins, consulting tables, and struggling with basic addition and multiplication. After double, then triple checking your maths, you have your final score. Negative five victory points. You'll be lucky if the suzerain doesn't have your whole family executed for such a pitiful performance. I've got 15 points. Don't look too glum, detective. There's always next time. Figuratively, I mean. There's no way we have time to play this game again. Forget you, Kim. Now let's clean up and get back to work. You hold the open game box. Right, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> now I'm not even friends with Kim anymore. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to go and start the interaction with Ruby. I'll cut you in when uh, we get to the bit where we have to knock over the white noise machine. Okay, guys, um, we've got, we're have got. we going to try and take the machine down, see where that goes. Let's heal a little bit. Um. Pain threshold. Hit me. I think we need to convince her not to shoot herself if this works. Which, well, it has worked. Let's go, Harry. Take it down. You can do it. You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell. You alright, Kimmy? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Oh my god, what are you doing? Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes it is. Wow, 72. I didn't know this was rhetoric. Don't... Do it, Ruby! She's truly oh. desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What kind of options? You know. Maybe I can talk her out of it? This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please. Just walk away. She stares at you, frozen. The gun still in her mouth. Eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude. Doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax. 
and her grip on the gun loosens. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She says, pulling the gun out of her mouth, eyes still fixed on you. Then she turns her gaze to the tunnel behind you. She runs past you, then past oh, the okay. lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the... Good call. Did my best. I would have done the same, had I not been incapacitated. I don't think she did it. Her tent. We should check it out. Okay, that didn't really turn out much different, did it? Um, great. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll pick it up back at the tribunal. I don't know how I'm going to do that any different. Um, I might just take the gun with me and I'll wear all the armor. That's the only thing I can really change. So I'll, I'll see you at the tribunal. Right, guys, I'm about to head to the tribunal. Um, I have done drugs. I've smoked, and we've had a little drink. Uh, we've got the the set of um fair weather gear on. Um, and this is the set. We kind of look like an undercover Cronell agent. So um, this is how everything looks. We're nice and buffed for whatever comes up. I think. So, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. I'm all out of shit to give, Loincloth. Okay, so because we've got all these buffs, we can just kind of nip this in the bud straight away. Um, we don't have to risk anything else, so... Um, I'm just going to go straight for the rolls. So I'm going to try and think of an argument first. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Grenell would never sanction this. Yes. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. How long have we got left on these? 45 minutes. Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Just a question. Who's in charge of your unit after the death of your colonel? Grenell does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called down well once. What happened? Gulp and say nothing. Did we get this the first time round? I can't remember. I think we might have done. You were called down well once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial monkey time burned villages. Shit that sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell. For much longer. He looks around. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Okay, now... I've, I've had a go at this a, a, a few times. And Lizzie's ended up getting shot when I plead with them that they didn't do it. Um, so we're going to talk about the hanged man next. Dangerous. Uh -oh. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you, Corty? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Corty. Cortana, Major Raoul Corti Cortana, friends with Lely, Raoul and Lely. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Lely says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kit tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. I can't quite remember what order I did it in before. I th I'm pretty sure I failed. Did I fail the rhetoric check? I failed one of them. 
I think. I can't remember. That really happened, didn't it, Benital? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. And your ship pipes ready to fuck him. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lady knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipt here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. Listen, man. We told you we told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck. You'll die first. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Uh, I'll find his killer, dude. Find his killer? Cop, his killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Today. Big talk, but you got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Okay, so pleading that they didn't do it is what led to Lizzie getting shot, so. Um, who's that? Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. How and Cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. Rude? Rip you open. Perhaps it's for the best. Him not talking too much. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. What do you think he does? Um, I don't know if we should antagonize him because I don't want Lizzie to get shot. He kills. Smart loincloth. He fucks natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Easy. Easy now. You're all drunk. Yes. So what? Alcohol is a trick the desert pygmies played on us. Don't succumb to it. <laughs> hey, that might, they, they might subscribe to Advanced Race Theory. Because <laughs> they're, they're all probably a bunch of racists, right? Let's try it. Alcohol is a trick. Stupid shit. I know what you're doing. Damn it. Fuck. It's not gonna work. I'm clear as day. He must be tweaked off too, with something other than alcohol. They always are. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. Now, you got them both off piece. He's foaming mad at her. I'm gonna lay, say maybe leave that till last. Um, what's, uh, what about Joyce? You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he isn't just boasting. He really doesn't care. Back out of this now, or it'll get bad. All right. Fucking waste this fuck! Ignore her. She's not the main threat. Classy? Who the fuck is that? Classy, the woman upstairs. Where is she? There's God. She left! Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! Don't call them names, God. We should have arrested her. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. For God's sake. Tell him the Hardys didn't do it. Present a case. Man, so 
Right, they didn't do it. Yeah. Who did then? I need some more time. Time? You had time to fuck around in that church to run errands for your union chief. Time is up, Lion Clark. Give me my name. Now! Okay, now, saying it was someone else angers him. I wonder if we say it was us, what happens? They, they know it's not us. It's someone else. How fucking convenient. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. <clears throat> now, the sniper thing annoys him. I imagine all of it annoys him. I wonder if he could get guard shot. <laughs> I wonder if we accuse them. What happens? That might just annoy him. Hmm. I mean, I, I said it was the sniper last time, right? It was one of you. One of us? You saying we? What if I just shot one of your pals here right now? Huh? How about the kilt? Go ahead. Tell me fucking killed our own colonel one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who... Okay, so I think it's dependent on hitting this check then. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud in a public place. Yeah, he was shot. You're lying. DePaul heard it. A Kiel Model 40 revolver. Eight rounds in the barrel. The gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. You heard wrong. She and his men have been helping us find the shooter. And the guard is not even one of them. Liars. Okay, so that's right. So if you miss that logic check, Lizzie gets shot. The shot rings in your is a low tinny ring then the hardy boys yell something the young woman stands and looks behind her the shot has flown right. over her head crashing a small pane of the glass window behind because her. i think my logic would have been pretty low the first time i think that was a, a 50 50 the first time right uh in the first playthrough so i was pretty lucky otherwise lizzie would have died i missed not true. He purposefully overaimed and shot the window. You had him second guessing himself, only for a second. Do not assume he will miss the next time. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Yeah. All right. So I wonder what I don't know what the check is here. If you is this just a gun check, then if you don't have the spirit bomb equipped, because I I, I I equip both because I felt like we maybe get to shoot this guy after we set him on fire or shoot her. Eat fire, motherfucker. With a crash of shattering glass and a terrible roar, the fire draws in oxygen. The bomb hits the mercenary in the chest, swallowing him in flames as he staggers backward. In the fiery inferno, you'll see your tie coiling around the man's neck. It is no longer horrific, but beautiful and pure. I wonder if Kim's going to truly trust me still, after the church stuff and... I don't know. Maybe pursuing the ultra-liberal stuff? I don't know. I only ever wanted you to have fun, Harry. It calls out to you one last time. What's your name? My name, should you know it, is Jobson AS Men's Fashion Model Colourful Tie, catalogue number J327. How did we meet? One day a sad man walked into a clothing store. He looked really down, like he hadn't had fun in years. He needed someone to show him how to rock and roll again. Jupson is catalog number J327 shone on the tie rack, trying to get his attention. 
The sad man picked it up and put it on. He looked at himself in the mirror, didn't smile. I'm young again. And from that moment on, we rode together. The rest of your clothes were still normal back then, but we took care of that soon enough. Normal police officer clothes just don't go well with a multi-pattern disco tie made of 98.7% <laughs> pure uh, flammable polyester. Sorry, I want to hear all this again. Did we have any fun? Truthfully, not a lot. I did everything a multi-pattern necktie can do to help a man. I mean, I tried to get you to do all the fun things. Oh no, all my stuff's worn off. Oh no, they're, no they're not. Phew. Drink beer, drink wine, drink cider. Go to parties with young people around and drink beer and cider. Do drugs too, so you don't fall asleep. You had some fun, but not enough to heal you. What's wrong with me, dude? Your heart is broken, Bratushka, and it cannot be mended. Believe me, I've tried. Forever? No, you're going to be mowed down by gunfire from the two remaining mugs. So no, <laughs> not forever. What's her name? You both did, Bratan. Deep down, you know it was both of you. No, no. It was her, mostly. Don't lie to him, Necktie. What's going on with that guy? This guy? Well, his face has cracked open into a scream of terror. It looks like he's performing some sort of a shamanistic dance that requires you to be on fire. Yeah. His body contorts in a very disturbing manner. There's no mincing words with this one. He's dying a horrible, painful death as you're talking to your tie in your head. <laughs> you got what was coming for him. Eventually, we all do, Harry. Bye, necktie. See you on the other side. The necktie disintegrates into molten heat, its last remaining embers letting out a pop and crack that sounds like... Harry, for God's sake, watch out! So then the sniper goes. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves Ooh. are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Okay, our reaction speed is quite decent. Dodge it! You leap left. A swarm of angry lead passes mere millimeters from your side, tearing fabric off your coat. Feels like the lightest of time. I am immortal. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out. To your left. Nepal is about to take a oh shot no. to at Kim. God, please. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. Can we not shoot at her? We've got a gun. Two shots ring at once. Uh! One from the lieutenant's pistol and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. He screamed. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh, God. Watch out! You see two crazed eyes stare at you through the burning meat and the flames. With his face boiling off, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Okay, I think that this, I think you can't hit this because some red checks are, are in the game are actually impossible, like literally impossible to, to, to succeed at. Look him in the eye. The look of vengeance, framed by melting skin. This is the last thing he will do on Earth. But he will do it. He will end you. Here it comes. Death. Guess we let it happen then. You simply blink, then something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. 
You're bleeding out. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. It's so dark. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. There's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. I can't forget it, even when I drank so much. Instead, I have a vast soul. Do I? I can't forget it. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there. Raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. Hey, we got two buffs. I thought it was just the plus two last time. Not a chance in hell, Kim. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world is gone. This is dead. One more door, baby. One more door. I want to fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs. And feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his warm sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. You're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep some more. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. Okay. So I imagine if you don't have the spirit bomb, then you can just shoot um, Corti, right? I thought having them both equipped, but I probably had them both equipped last time, didn't I? So you see didn't... the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. All right, guys, uh, I'm not going to re show you any more of this bit, uh, but I'll, when we, if we get to see the statue, which would be pretty awesome, I'll, I'll go to it. All right, guys, time to see if this statue is here. We're post tribunal, obviously. What has happened? There's no scaffolding. The scaffolding around the old monument has been taken down. In its place are the spoils of your investment. Oh, Numerous rods and ropes still hold the original reassemblage in place. 
Let's reflect on the reconceptualization. An apricot scepter shines party bright right. across the monument. Glitter balls dangle like severed heads below the eternal king of disco. It is unmistakably a vision of you in your prime. A killer on the performance floor. Icon for all. Doesn't feel right to party now, does it? Are you at least happy with it? Putting on a brave face and partying as hard as possible yes. is the best way to get through tough times. Happy isn't the word. You can be satisfied with a job well done, but the current mood doesn't invite any analogs to joy. We all need to pick me up and I'm glad to provide as entertainer, style leader, superstar law official of the world. It's a job well done. Any happiness should be reserved for now. He nods in respectful agreement, then closes his eyes for half a beat. When he opens them, it's clear he has something to say to you. Okay. Detective, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. About what? About this uh, <laughs> pursuit of wealth, pursuit of recognition. <laughs> he looks up, trying to find a name for your actions. I don't mind. He nods. Eyes still on the megastar above, his face tinged by the citrus beams warming the cold air. Why did you do it? I wanted to better myself. The free market demands it. Fame and riches come naturally to me, don't you think? It's not what I wanted. This is all idiot doom spirals work. I want it better for myself. He nods. The roundabout is quiet, almost eerily so, under the brilliant sun. The king of disco is lit up like a stage anticipating a funky beat that will never come. Honest. Maybe even too honest. Didn't we talk about giving back to the community? Nothing wrong with raw ambition. Yeah. And was it all worth it? 100% uh, worth it. I'd do it all over again, but this time with more profit. Hey, it's the system. I did my best to support artists, employ people, give back to the community, even told Idiot Doom Spiral to stop drinking. Yeah, sure. It's the system. Ah, yes. Spoken like a true philanthropist. He smiles gently. All right. Shall we? We still have some things left to do before we can go home. I should probably talk to Doom Spiral first. I don't think we have time for that. And even if we did, I doubt he's around anymore. Okay. Everyone's left. Let's have one more look. Sure. Whenever you're ready. The disco dancer towers above, mounted on a horse. Numerous rods and ropes still hold the original reassemblage in place. All right, guys. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to end the bonus episodes here. This is the kind of the last thing that would be different, I think, other than maybe Kim Kimmy's summary at the end, including this, something about this and the church. Um, so I might play through that and I'll, rec I'll record it if it's different. I'll put all... You won't hear me even hear me say this, but yeah, that's going to bring the disc series of Disco Elysium to an end as we look on our glorious statue looking over Martinez. It's been a fabulous experience. Um, I'm really glad that I got to experience some of these extra quests. Uh, the church in particular, I, you saw how much fun I had there where we got to cut loose. Kim had a dance. We had a dance. We learned a lot about the pale and kind of like the world beyond almost is very um transcendent right so i think that that's a really good place to end it as we look on our disco monument um towering <laughs> over all the miserable workers <laughs> anyway um thank you for joining me for disco elysium this has been one of the one of my favorite playthroughs it's been one of the best games i've ever played um, and i've thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish i hope you did too so we'll leave it there. Subnautica coming up next um, in the next few days. I hope you join me for that as well. Um, so please leave me a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And just remember, everybody, never trust an uncreate. I'll see you in the next one.